Hello again. Welcome to Kimmel Bird Church's daily vlog. And today I've been asked to choose a promise from the Bible. And the promise out of many that there are in the Bible is from John's Gospel in the New Testament, John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In the Amplified Version, in brackets underneath this verse, it says, Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. For the past few years, my work was amongst the bereaved, some of whom had no faith, some had a very fragile faith, which came about because they were brought up in a family who thought they should go to church on a Sunday. It was something that people did. Or because, as someone once said, you have to believe in something. There has to be something else at the end of this life. Some of those who believed in God, who believed in Jesus Christ as an forgiving them their sins, still needed reassurance when someone they dearly loved had died. They needed more than hugs and words of sympathy. They needed to know this peace was inside them. Jesus promised that it was ours, but unless we believe that this promise is for us, unless we keep in contact with him, and not just when we're lost, when we're upset, when we're afraid, but keeping contact with him so that this peace is as part of life as breathing is. We'll not find it, we'll not understand it, if we keep Jesus out of the picture. In John chapter 14, Jesus answers those questions about what happens next and how we can be part of it. In verse 1 of chapter 14, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's how we can be part of what happens next, to believe and accept Jesus into our lives. Jesus then goes on to explain that he's going to prepare a place for all who believe and accept him and says he will come again and receive us, believers, Um in the New King James Version, it says, I will receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I like to think of being received by him personally, almost as if I'm going to go into his arms immediately. Nice, nice thought, isn't it? To think of, of getting a hug at that time. I wonder, do you ever self, put yourself into verses when you're reading? I often do. I read this verse as if Jesus is sitting next to me saying, Marge, I'm giving you a special gift, the gift of my peace, so that even when everything around you is in turmoil, you'll know my peace and you'll know that I am with you. You will no doubt have heard the story of the art competition. It's been going around for years. The subject was peace. Two pictures drew most attention. One of a lake, so calm that the blue sky, white clouds and mountains were all reflected in it. Absolutely beautiful. But the one which won was of a raging storm and in a crevice in the cliff was a bird quietly sitting on a nest, completely unfazed by all that was going on around her. Peace. The peace Jesus speaks of is not world peace. It's not of a life without disagreements or upsets. Jesus was preparing his disciples for what was to come. They'd had a busy week, starting six days before Passover. In chapter 12, Jesus was anointed by Mary in the home she shared with Martha and their brother Lazarus. You remember Lazarus. He was the one Jesus raised from the dead. 
Next day was the triumphant journey into Jerusalem with crowds shouting praise to Jesus. We come to chapter 13, the Last Supper in the Upper Room. Jesus kneeling, washing their feet, setting them an example of how his followers should serve one another, how they should set an example of what following him means. He said, didn't he, by this will others know that you are my disciples, if you love one another, if we serve one another. Judas is identified um, in this supper as the one who's going to betray Jesus. Imagine their shock. And then Jesus tells them that he's only going to be with them for a little while longer. And Peter asks him, why, where are you going? I'll come with you. I would lay down my life for you. Jesus says, will you really? You'll disown me before the cock crows. I can imagine the other disciples being completely bewildered by all that's going on. And into this, Jesus speaks peace and reassurance to them. But peace with a difference. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, peace is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness and faithfulness. When you think about it, all these fruits or gifts of the Holy Spirit are what should show others that we belong to Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Paul describes it as the peace of God which is beyond human understanding. Jesus promised that it's ours when we receive him. Long ago, I used to go to a gospel mission when I was in my early teens. And I've never forgotten one of the choruses we used to sing. It was written in 1940. Peace floods my soul, for I have a saviour. Peace that he gives, the world cannot take it away. Freedom from sin since Jesus came in. A wonderful, wonderful, wonderful peace floods my soul since my saviour came in. I hope you know this peace. I pray you do. May God bless you with his own peace. And I'll be praying for you.